Hello! Welcome! Uh, glad you could make it to this wherever you are place at whatever time it is when you're watching this. Um, I'm really excited to take y'all through um, the music in my song Good Folks Club um, and just sort of go inside, see the different layers that made it up, um, how it was constructed, what instruments I was using, um, and just some of the creative process behind making it. So, um, before we get started, fun, true, sad story, I guess not fun, but maybe good is I actually recorded this whole video, um, a couple days ago. And then I realized when I did it that you couldn't see, um, like when I brought up Cubase, which is the software I use for making music, you couldn't it was just like a frozen shot. So you could see the mouse moving and stuff, but it like nothing else moved. And so it was <laughs> rather boring to watch. So we're doing it again. Um, but for you, it's the first time. What fun. Um, so yeah, uh, hope you enjoy. I'm going to just transition some of these, uh, transition the display so you can see. Oh, look at that. Look at it in all its glory. It's so beautiful, so colorful, mm, delicious. So um, for the for those who are not familiar with Cubase, uh, this is a digital audio workstation or DAW for short. Um, so these are all these um, tracks that contain audio information um, up here, uh, down here, the ones that are muted, the little yellow M means it's muted. Um, these are MIDI tracks. So these are basically electronic instruments that um, you can program notes into. So like, for instance, hello, anyone home? Um, for instance, if I pull up, here's the drum editor, you can see here's all the drum hits for that little section of the music. Um, and yeah, so you can hear different sounds in here. Um, so anyways, these are MIDI, MIDI things, which MIDI stands for musical interface, wait, musical instrument, digital interface, I think. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. Anyways, um, but yeah, so a lot of the, a lot of the instruments you hear are in fact not real. They, I programmed them either through, um, playing them in on the keyboard, just, entering in notes, like, let me pull up, here's the bass part, entering in notes here, maybe just by, you know, penciling them in, ta-da. Um, and then the computer, you know, computerized instruments played them. So um, you can see down here, we have the drums, bass, piano, organ sounds, some other instruments um, that ended up, I ended up changing them into audio files, just like when you record into a microphone. Um, but they, they started off their musical lives as mere electronic instruments. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick overview of what you see here on the screen. Um, so each one of these little bits is a bit of sound. Um, cool. So I have a list, I have a nice handy dandy list of things that I'm supposed to tell you all about. And I think I closed it, which is not why. So I'm going to pull that up. <laughs> um, sticky. Sticky notes. Here we go. Aha. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in and just take a look at what we have here. So the song obviously starts with, um, well, not obviously. Maybe you haven't even heard it and somehow you're watching this video. Welcome, if so. Uh, so the song starts off with this. This nice organ sound, um, which yes, that was not a real organ. I did not go to a church and ask to borrow their pipe organ for a couple minutes. Um, that was <laughs> a computerized instrument. Um, and we have here, we have some, in the background, we have the crowd milling around. Yay, people. And this sound, uh, all, all the sound in the beginning, it sort of starts on one ear and moves its way over. I, I, so I had this sort of almost like filmmaker's vision of the camera sort of like panning across and you see this church and you hear the organ playing 
the little out, out, not a, an outer lewd, an outro, a, a recessional. Uh, no one's getting married, I don't think. But um, <laughs> anyways, it's 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 the idea. Of this, here's the end of the service. You hear the people milling around. You hear the organ. Um, you hear somewhere here. Ah, church bells. This church bell sound was just a bell sound I found on the internet, and then I put it into a sequence or no, a sequencer. I don't even know what the right word is. I put it into a thing <laughs> that makes it so that you can change whatever note it's playing. So I can take this bell sound and I can. can play any sort of sounds you want with that bell. Um, but it was originally a bell that was playing a, or maybe, I think it was this C, which is the note it plays here. So it sounds at its most natural. Um, so this was not the original intro for the song. I didn't really know how I wanted to start the song out at first because it initially just started right here. Just with the drums, bass, um, and you know that a couple other sounds that you hear in there. And um, But it, that, that just felt super abrupt. And um, so when I wrote the... Um, the words in the last chorus, the uh, Jesus, how we become so blind, singing blessed be the tie that binds while leaving family behind. Um, that that blessed be the tie that binds, that comes, that's a reference to a hymn, which is actually that you hear the organ playing the end of that hymn at the beginning. Uh, it's, just, it's a hymn that's called blessed be the tie that binds. And I think the next line is like, that binds us together in love. And then it says something about like our minds being the, like the fellowship of minds that are unified or something like that. And so, um, the reason that him, I, I reference it is that obviously the song is about this sort of disconnect between us and them, um, that I feel like I see sometimes in the church. And so, um, this, uh, like sort of this, um, I don't even know what the right word is, but like this tension um, of, of you know, we sing these songs about being unified and, and we're all bound together in love, like bless the tie that binds us all together in love. And then is that really what we see happening? And so I don't know, churches probably don't really sing this song much anymore. So, um, but at the beginning, just to really paint that clear si sign of a church, it was like organ, church bells crowd milling around like it instantly communicates church um even though it's a bit stereotypical oh well um so yeah let's let's take a look at what we got here um so a lot of these sounds and i'll just use the bass to demonstrate a lot of these sounds are actually made up of oh and uh that's the audio file so i won't be able to bring it up from there here we go here's the midi thing so i'll pull up the instrument ah the instrument so here you can see the bass is made up of four different bass sounds. Um, so like, if I just play here, oh, it's not very loud because the level is way down. Um, but you can hear there's that sound, there's this sound, which is more dominant, um, this sound, which sort of has that wobbling to it it's a trance trumpet so it sort of comes and goes and then here's this sound and so that gives it sort of that boom that punch at the beginning and a lot of the sounds you hear i won't <laughs> i won't drag you through all of them but a lot of the sounds you hear are made up of multiple different instruments that are layered together and when we have those all together we get we get that we get that really i don't know i, I thought it was a cool bass sound <laughs> um it's got it's got some punch. It's got some body to it. Some 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 bite. It's got all the things. Um, here's a nice little sound in the background. I think this is just a single instrument that I didn't actually do too much with, but it's called penumbral. Yes, the interpretive dance is free, <laughs> um, and so uh, that. That just adds another little layer of like, I call it shimmer, good folks shimmer. Not that all good folks shimmer, but <laughs> it's a shimmery sort of sound um, just to give it an extra layer. And it's a little, also a little creepy, but ethereal. I don't know, sound cool. This guitar-ish. 
So it's not really a guitar sound. There's like some synthesizer in there. There's also some like computerized guitar sounds in there. Um, so that, that happens a lot. This also comes back more dominant in the chorus. You'll hear. Oh, too early. So you can hear the, the guitar sort of strums and then the synth holds through. And then we have the piano, which had a couple extra sounds in there. So a little bit honky tonk, a little bit warbly. Um, now this bass guitar for picking, um, what like I love the sound of um, you know bass guitar way up high. This is something I found when I started getting into electronic music a little bit more. Is that um, sometimes for like a really high high sounds up here. Whoop, can y'all even hear that? What's going on here? Oh, there we go. It's just, it's kind of cool. Like it's, it's totally out of its normal register. Um, it's normal range where it plays, you know, you know, it's used to hear it down here. Well, maybe not that low. And if you have, a, if you're listening to this on a phone, sorry, you probably didn't hear any of that. Um, <laughs> but, um, when you put it up high, it, it, it just sound it makes this cool, like kind of like plucky sound. So. Yeah, so it, I, I just really like that. It gives it just a little bit of bite. So all together, you have all those different elements going on. And I might be wrong. You might be right. So you can hear all those things. And then, of course, down here, all these green tracks are the brass. So we had three trumpets, which were all me, and... Um, looks like we have six different trombone tracks again all me so not trumpet players but trumpet tracks um, brass tracks rather um, here we go we have the lead vocals um, right here which you can see um, I record many times like here lead vocals 34 that means there's the 34th take on this track lead vocals double like yeah 40 so lots and lots of takes um, and um, if you listen carefully, you, you can hear where there might be some transition. One thing I realized when I was um, going through this the first time I tried to make this video was uh, there's actually a very big, like, obvious mistake. So somehow, I don't know what I was adjusting or what I was doing, but you can hear uh, I jack up the reverb here and then I bring it down here and it makes it for like a very obvious like break in the texture. Listen to this. Light. Of a grace so embracing of the people that we're chasing out of our good folks club. And that's what it went out. That's in the world right now. So it's like really boomy and then super dry. Oh, well, what you going to do? Um, you can fix it like this. So it doesn't happen again. Yay. So this is more what it was envisioned to sound like. Eight of a grace so embracing of the people that we're chasing out of our good folks club. And one thing, one thing with this music that I, I really struggled with for a while is like, I didn't want to use any pitch correct on my voice. Cause I was like, I want it to be so authentic. Um, and then I realized if people are actually going to want to listen to it and like, I'm not, you know, the world's best singer. And so it's like, if people are going to want to listen to this, um, like I need to apply some pitch correction where I just didn't quite, didn't quite lock it in, you know? Um, so there is pitch correction um surprise <laughs> but it's authentic because i told you so there um and what, one other thing to know i originally when i originally conceived this track i had the tempo was mm, a lot slower it was probably something more like maybe like 70 beats per minute so oh, ah oh no what have i done okay whoops so i'm just gonna solo the beginning this is what sort of was originally was the idea more like anyways you get the idea so that was kind of the original vision um, but you can see that that doesn't quite have the same amount of energy um, so now it sounds 
This is like... You can see it has a lot more drive. Also, did something happen to my guitar sound? Because it sounds off. Whoa, what have I done? I must have moved this part around somewhere. Oh, I still have it at the old tempo. That's what, okay. So actually, I'm just going to control Z a bunch. There we go. So now, at the original tempo, for the original tempo. So anyways, you get the point. Probably spent too much time, but you get it now. Excellent. Um, so, um, let's move on a little bit. So right here, one of my favorite parts of the whole track is when the bass trombone comes in to support that bass line. So it adds this, it adds this really crunchy um, extra layer to it that you can hear at the bottom. And you can see I just sort of did the same thing. I had, I, you know, even you can see this one note. I either what didn't place it in the right place or is out of tune. I had to re redo it. So the the part of the beauty of making music this way is that you don't have to like get it right all at once. You need to get it right in little chunks and then you piece it together. And then, yeah. So it th there's so much you can do creatively when you don't have to get it, everything right the first time. Um, cool. So... Um, oh yeah, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this lick. So in this first little interlude, this lick here, so it's, that is super sloppy trombone play. I'm not going to lie. I went, when I listened to this recently, like when I was making the video the first time, I was like, dang, I can't believe I, that's like, that sounds terrible. But the beauty is you, uh, I doubled it and I put on some effects and all of a sudden, All the effects, the effects turn it into this washy, like wah 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 sort of sort of thing, and it, it covers over all those blemishes, so to speak. Um, that lick took me forever, way too long for you know five seconds of of musical idea ideas. Like <laughs> I, I I started off just I was just scatting, I was you know listening to the track, and I was just scatting along to come up with ideas like. <laughs> And I was like, and then I spent forever trying to transcribe it because it's a pretty gnarly lick. It doesn't it doesn't stay in the key, kind of wanders all over the place, and it covers a fair amount of high to low the range. Um, so I first I transcribed it to MIDI, so um, plugging it in through the keyboard one note at a time to see if I could just like do it all in synthesizer, and like it just didn't have that human element to it. It sounded very like. Dur -dur 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 -dur. So um, then I figured out how to do it on trombone and then add some effects. So um, it's just one example of what this, this creative process looks like. Alrighty, let's keep on moving. Um, so um, yeah, so in the second verse, a lot of times, um, and if I quote Jacob Collier, it's just because I'm a big fan, but, um, Jacob Collier, and this isn't his idea, but like watch, he does videos like this, which are, you know, super interesting and amazing and inspirational. <laughs> Maybe while I'm doing this, no, uh, but, uh, he talks about like, like pop producers and stuff, which I'm not, but I'm learning, I guess. Um, they, a lot of times if you, if something comes back in the music, you, it never comes back exactly the same way. Like, you know, exactly the same bass, exactly the same drums. You got to add something to add interest. So like, um, that this line that the b brass plays here originally, originally, whoa, why is everything still muted? Oh, here we go. <laughs> originally, uh, this was just like the piano. So in the first verse we had the piano playing do 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 and now we add in the brass. Our good folks church has forgotten to search our own hearts that beat 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 with And so we have this uh these kind of more aggressive trumpets and then the second half is a lot more reflective. So then it goes it goes from trumpets to this trombone. So it's a, it's a lot more subdued. Um, 
So this part, I had a lot of fun with the vocals for this part um, because the line is, um, actually, let me talk about the lyrics for the second verse. So it seems our good folks church has forgotten to search our own hearts that beat, beat, beat with the self-assurance unfit for our hospital gowns. Have we forgotten the truth of how we were found? Um, that, that idea of the hospital gowns comes from that quote, which I think I first learned it through Tim Keller, but it's not his quote. Um, of how the church is meant to be a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. And this song is sort of exploring that idea in some ways of how um, a lot of us, it seems, in the church have forgotten that. We're still wearing hospital gowns. We are, we are still very much in need. Uh, we are still very much in process. We are still very much in healing. Um, and so, but it seems like maybe we forget that very easily. I know I do. I struggle um in the in the words of Gable Price and Friends, one of my newer favorite bands, um, "Am I Just a Modern Pharisee?" Um, is sometimes how I feel. <laughs> um, so, anyways, this this part here, this soft part. Uh, first of all, it has. Uh, I just sang it a lot quieter. Quieter. Maybe I was just admitted before my symptoms could progress. So it's a lot softer there. Did I do something? Did I do something with the, um, I don't know if I did something with the EQ or something, but anyways, so it's, it's there sung a lot softer than I also did this. Maybe I was just admitted before my symptoms could progress. So it's kind of that really creepy whisper and that whisper is all the way over in one ear. And then on the other side, we have this. So it's kind of that same whispering, whispering, I don't know if it's the exact same audio file, they look slightly different. Um, this one I just probably lowered the level, but it's it's that whisper, but it's a little bit even distorted. And so you have like the soft singing down the middle and then whispers and then like whispers over on one side. Um, and the lyrics here are, um, maybe I was just admitted before my symptoms could progress. Maybe I would answer differently if I were under duress. And... Um, yeah, I, I think sometimes like I, I can be so self-assured of like, this is definitely what God thinks. Um, <laughs> um, and and I think about maybe if I hadn't had the life experiences I have, um, maybe I would answer a little bit differently. Um, whereas I feel like so much of God's grace in my life has been preventative in some ways. He's kept me from a lot of destructive things um, that could have really altered my altered my life a lot and I haven't had to wrestle with the consequences of some things because God graciously protected me from those um so but it's like maybe I would see things differently if if I had gone through the duress and hardship of those um just wrestling with that question not not making any moral statements here but just thinking through that and then what well, that was the second line though was the first one yeah uh. Oh yeah, maybe I was just admitted before my symptoms could progress. That's that idea of like God's preventative grace of like, maybe, yeah, it's not that I did something like, oh, I'm so great. Look at me, you know? Um, Cause I, I've been a goody two shoes kid my whole life, pretty much uh, getting back to the modern Pharisee thing. But like, maybe it's, it's more of God just is like, yo, you're going to get in some serious trouble. You're going to really get hurt. I'm going to, I'm going to in my grace rescue from that before it happens rather than letting you go through it. Um, I don't know, not super well-formed thoughts, but um, in the way I'm saying it right now, but hopefully that sort of explains a little bit behind those lines. Um, so. Yeah, and uh, so for most of this, the drums, I either like painstakingly came up with a loop, you know, plugging in, um, things where they went. I think a couple of them were just kind of like computer generated loops that, you know, I just plug in, I want it to be this intensity and this complexity and blah, blah, blah. And like, um, groove agent spit, spit something out. Uh, but then there were some parts where I actually, um, a couple from church had this old, super old drum set from like 95. Um, 
electronics sitting up in their in their house and in a box and so they're like yeah you can use it so i think this is actually one of those spots that where i was actually playing the drums i probably had to edit some afterwards but like it's like that's my actual drum playing yay um cool so uh yeah let's let's keep it moving um so here's another one of those things, like the second chorus I added in this lead synth line um, to make it more interesting. So that changes some. And also you can see how that sounds kind of like eh, 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 eh. Um, And that's, the, that's another what thing of beauty in this kind of art is that something might not sound great by itself, but you put it in the mix and it's like, whoo! Ooh, that really that's really nice same thing um the bass the first time through bass the first time through the uh, chorus sounds something like this um, um. so pretty chill not too much going on just doom doom really hitting the downbeats and then the second time through the chorus So anyways, you get the idea, but adding complexity, adding some interest um, to that. And then uh, this next part was a lot of fun. This is just sort of an interlude. Um, it's sort of led by this bass trombone line down here. So the world's best bass trombone playing? I don't think so. But when you couple it with the bass and you put it in with the rest of the mix, I mean, it comes out pretty pretty good. Yeah, that second note was like super out of tune. I had to pitch it up or down one way and I, st I still don't think it was quite locked in, but whatever. It's the hum beauty of humanity and art, you know? It's never perfect. Um, I, I love this, there's like this, this sort of driving line here, the picking bass guitar. Um, and that, that's sort of fighting a little bit against the drums, which adds like this interesting rhythmic tension. Yeah, so this is another thing, um, again, not Jacob Collier's idea, but he talks about how music rolls like an egg um, in, in a lot of different styles. Like a lot of times in our like Western classical music, it's very much like one and two and three and four and where is this much more like dun 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 And it's not, even, it's not even quite the rolling like an egg thing he's talking about that some other musical cultures really do. But it's sort of that like little bit wonky feeling. I think this is something I just played in through the keyboard. Dun 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 dun. And whatever rhythmic variations I had, they're still in there. Unless they were like horrendous. And then I'd probably edit them out. Um, so this lead synth line, this is a lot of fun. It's, it's basically just like straight eighth notes, which again, um, add to that rhythmic complexity. I'll, I'll bring it in here. Just Oh, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I don't have a mod wheel, so I had to do it, a modulation wheel, so I had to do it manually. You hear it's going, whoa, whoa, whoa. you can see that going up and down here. Um, and then it sort of fades out right at the end, which is a lot of fun. Um, where was I going with that, though? Hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, so basically this this is, uh, by itself, you can hear it's pretty wonky in terms of the rhythm's not very accurate. You can hear, doo -doo -doo -doo. it's like sort of rushing and then slowing down and catching itself, but that, that adds to this sort of rhythmic um, wash, kaleidoscopy-ish feel. Um, and then was, this is really fun. At the end, I added in this sort of descending line, which... I'll turn on the bass as well. Sort of, it's, I, I sort of envisioned it like, um, this part's almost like dropping, you drop a rock into a, a bunch of water and it sort of goes, 
and like all the all the water moves out of the way and splashes up and that sort of laid the groundwork for that final um third course or was it a verse i think it was a chorus. we'll find out <laughs> Yeah. So, and you can hear it going back and forth from ear to ear. Let's see if I can show you the panning. Can I show you the panning? Please, sir, show me the panning. So you can see this is it going from all the way up to the, let's see, this is right, yeah? No, all the way to the left, then all the way to the right, then all the way to the left, and then back to the middle. So it ends up being something like this. Oh, there you go. And then it sort of, it sort of just blends right into that bass, which again, if you're watching your phone, you probably didn't hear any of that. Boom, boom. We had this really low bass line going on. Um, also, props to my man Patrick who uh, listened to this before I put it out and was add, suggested adding a little bit more of that low octave to the bass. Um, good call, Patrick, <laughs> just to give it that really that that sense of depth. Um, yeah, so. Uh, this this next part, the, um, the the words are just talking about how like Jesus, you prayed that we'd be unified. The next day you're crucified, and the narrow gate was open wide. Um, Jesus, like the night before he was crucified, he prayed um, that um, that all his followers would be one and would be unified. And that's something that um, yeah, that's something that the song is just wrestling through. Like, why why doesn't it seem like that's true? I mean, it's not true. <laughs> and and why is that not true? Um, and um, so the, the, and the narrow gate was open wide. That doesn't mean that the gate, the gate is wide. It means the gate is still narrow, but it's open wide. The door's not shut to the narrow gate. It's not like you get to the narrow gate and then you're like, you got to knock and, you know, hop three times on one leg and say the right prayer. And then you get in. It's like the narrow gate is open wide. Jesus opened that. And, uh, you know, we can come in now. Um, but I think to some of us, we're like, we're, we're trying to make it even narrower than it is so that people won't fit if they're weighted down with sin or so. I don't know what the analogy would be, but, <laughs> um, the gate has been open wide. Jesus has made a way. Um, and yeah. So anyways, that's, that's sort of the story behind those lyrics right there. Uh, but not in our eyes, Jesus. All right. So, but not in our eyes. It's saying, mm, we're not so sure if that gate's open, Jesus. Um, and here's this yelling. I have some yelling. So this is just to really emphasize that. But not in our eyes. And uh, there's all sorts of funny accent things going on here. Let me, let me turn this up so you can probably hear it a little better. So we have the main one. But not in our eyes. A little, a little twang there. I don't know why these all got kind of twangy, but. I think that was me going, and I was like standing in different parts of the room. I record it all up here. Uh, in this place. Here we go. Also, I don't know how these numbers got ordered. One, four, two, three, five. Strange things happen, you know. But not in our eyes. Ooh, so twangy. Much twang. Here we go. Let's see what this is. But not in our eyes. Yeah, so I was just trying to sound like more people than I actually am, but of course they all sound like me. <laughs> All right, so then all together, all together sounds like this. But not in our eyes. Mm. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so that's just to emphasize that all together in the mix. But not in our Oh, that wasn't in the mix. Come on, mix. Get with it. But not in our eyes, Jesus. Um. Yeah, and I was, I don't know what happened, but I was, must have been having an exceptionally good vocal day because um, I normally cannot sing super high notes and like, you know, the Lord must have been with me because I was able to like lay down this high harmony line here. Jesus, how have we become so blind? Singing blessed be the tie that binds while leaving family behind. Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, you wouldn't that want that to be the lead vocal because it's kind of strained and maybe a little like wow, you can tell it's out of his range, but it really it really adds a sense of like urgency and like wah to this last um, this last line, which again that's where the idea for the organ intro came from. Um, yes, so let's see what else did I want to talk about here. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, 
the uh I just want to point out there's sort of a progression in the but not in our eyes um or like we're the good folks so because we're the good folks geez. the first time because we're the good folks i'm just singing it it's not really saying one say anything one way or the other then jump over here Our anger and pride because we're the good folks geez. and that's sort of like yeah whoa that's right we are and then here um because we're the good folks it's sort of this incredulous like Really? Like, are what? <laughs> are we sure about that? Like, is that is that really what Scripture teaches? Is that really what God's saying um, when when He talks about? Um, yeah, I don't know. So um, that leads us into this last section, which after I had written it or, or recorded it or whatever, sort of I, I started conceiving it as being conceiving of it as being. Um, a cacophony of hypocrisy and i just had this idea of like it it was just supposed to sound kind of chaotic but also like churchy a little bit so we have this big so you have the organ and church bells going off um and then we also have let's see we have the brass going on here we have Yeah, and originally this was supposed to, this was going to be the melody there. That was going to be the main line, but then when I recorded this Yeah, I just I was like, "Ooh, I actually like that better." So I I, you know, I brought these these other parts down. It was like that's going to be the melody. Um and I recorded it this summer we were at, we just like stopped by an antique store, uh, me and my wife, and I found a trombone there. It was like a student model Bundy trombone. Um, and so we, I ended up buying it because I wanted a trombone that I could teach with and not be worried. Like if it gets knocked over or a kid accidentally, you know, um, dents it, like I'm not going to be like, that's my professional instrument. Um, <laughs> so I got it. And then I, you know, it's just like, a small bore, very like in your face, kind of like, um, very brassy sound. And so and it was just perfect for this. Or like, wah, 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 wah. Uh, perfect for this part. Um, so that, that all sort of builds into this next section. Um, and here we have the sort of the bass trombone and bass take over the melody. Which is so I don't know if you can count that as a melody, but that's happening. Then we have this really high, um, which I'm sure real trumpet players are going to look at me and say, really high? Like, it's not actually that high, but I'm a bass trombone player trying to play trumpet here. Give me some credit. Um, uh, so I had to record that part. It was like one of the first things I, I was doing as a brass player on uh, whatever day I was recording that because I was like, this wears out my chops so fast because I'm probably using not great technique. So I need to get this done first. Um, then we have down here in the trombone. And so that's just kind of chaotic. Like bow, 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 going back and forth. And I think that's coming in. I thought I panned this to one side or the other. Like, when I say pan, for those who don't know, yeah, so that means left, right, left, right. Um, so it's not like all the way to one side or the other, but it's sort of emphasized one side or the other. Then here we have... Yes, that it... Yep. Mm-hmm. All trombones are good for in some people's eyes, but it's also very fun. And so all together, it's just, it's, it's, it's very cacophonic. And of course, I can't forget the vocals here. Um, yeah, we're the good folks. Yeah, so this, this is just like... I think it's uh if you look at the actual the official lyrics it says like we're the good folks like 14 times in a row um 
Um, so I, yeah, I was just sort of, I had the instrumental stuff going. I don't know if it was done. I was like, it needs, it needs some like vocal, whatever. So it's very much just like reinforcing this message of, like I said, kind of hypocrisy. Um, so originally, originally though, I, when I was just trying to figure out what that was going to be, cause I was just sort of riffing, um, I can't, it was, it was a lot more, um, I don't know, <laughs> offensive maybe <laughs> so we're the good folks we're the good folks we're the good folks you're the bad folks we're the good folks you're the bad folks don't forget it you'll regret it we're the good folks you're the bad folks you're the bad folks we're the good folks we're the good folks we the... so anyways um that 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 just felt a little it's all very over the top. That felt a little too over the top, um, especially the. Uh, um, you don't forget it; you'll regret it. That that seems a little. Um, that was just like, cli- over the toply cliche. Um, I'm not. I'm not a very opposed to cliches. I kind of like them a lot of the time. In some ways, that was a little bit like okay. That's like, um, for some reason, I think that's entangled the Disney movie. Anyway, so I trashed that. I just sort of went with we're the good folks and just sort of repeating that over and over again. And um, as this went, um, I sort of had this idea. So it's, it's panning back and forth and you can see it's it's almost like this frenzied, like going back and forth from side to side. We're the good folks. We're the good folks. We're the good folks. We're the good folks. So it sort of had this idea of like, this like whoever this character is is sort of like running back and forth and like trying to get your attention and like in your face about like where where they're good folks and like and that's that's what the focus is on and that's what the driving energy is um which a lot of this um a lot of the um sentiment or message um like of that part of the song and and some of the other things that this song is really like taking a good hard look at is really opposed to what I did in the third song, um, poor in spirit, which is, it's instead of saying, we're the good folks. It's, it's saying blessed are the poor in spirit who like, don't know. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to do a video about that sometime soon as well. Um, let's take a listen here to just the ending. A couple other things to point out. Um, so right here at the end, uh, we had this cool pyramid effect with the brass building. Folks, we're the good folks. We're the good folks. We're the... So it goes from this sound where we have, I believe it's just like a C minor, like in the trombones. Then we add trumpet. And yes, that, that, that hot top trumpet note is intentionally sounding weird. Not so much the bending and like the fact that I didn't play it super well, but more that that wasn't that's not the part that's supposed to sound weird. But I I kind of dig it. Um, it's more this when you do this, you have these two notes, E flat and D, which are um, if we put them in the same octave, it would sound like this. They're spread out, so now they're but that that gives it that extra tension right before everyone goes to unison and octaves so they're all playing the exact same notes and everybody everybody who's playing at the end and by everybody i mean me because i was the only one but me and all the computers are are playing we're the good folks. besides the we're the good folks which who, uh, i don't know if those count as notes um everyone's playing the exact same notes right there um and then we had this cool bass bass trombone lick, and I'm sorry if you thought I played this people 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 be in in one take, um, going back and forth those, between those notes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to break the illusion, um, but yeah, I I, um, I did it every other time. But 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 and then but 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 so together it sounds like. Man, I probably should have just had the bass trombone play at the end, because that that's just 
If you don't know me, I love the sound of the bass trombone. It's why it's my primary instrument. And so, <laughs> um, yeah, but a lot, a lot of crunch right there. Um, another thing to notice, this organ here at the end oh, is muted. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> um, still muted? Am I doing something wrong here? Here. Um, So that sounds that sounds pretty different than the organ we had at the beginning, which sounds like this. So it, it has the same basic tone quality, but I I, I added something all quasi electric guitars to this one to make it. Um, apparently, I can't do that with MIDI tracks. Interesting. So it has that sort of distorted. <laughs> Just adding to that, that intensity of sound here at the end. Um, cool. So all together, we have this. And the, the first time I recorded this, I thought this trumpet. When I heard that in the mix, it sounded like a trombone going, what, at the end. And so I kept looking for which trombone is playing this. And I realized none of them were. And I was like, well, they should be, though. So I added in, you know. Whoa. Yeah. Um, and at some place. Point... Uh, at some place in here, I'm pretty sure there's a. There's a trombone where I where I recorded a uh, boom and it was not to a note I could play on trombone, so I recorded it and then I pitched it up. I couldn't find it the other day though, so might not be in here. Um, I think this might be pretty much all I have, except for one thing at the end here. The the musically astute might notice that the last two notes. <laughs> The last two notes are, oops, sorry. So it's E flat to A, that's a tritone. Um, the, a lot of people will talk about, oh, the tritone's the devil's interview, in, interval um, or whatever. And Adam Neely has a great video about how that's like not actually um, what like, there's like stuff saying, oh, the, in medieval times, that's what they thought. And he has a great video about why that's not really the case. Um, but, um, Part of me after, because I didn't even think about that. Part of me afterwards, like, oh, like it could be something like, oh yeah, the the devil's influence in the church or something, um, musically symbolized. But that was not at all the intent. It just sounds cool, um, and also that's not what that interval, in reality, actually ever meant. Um, but it is a very dissonant interval, um, which definitely jives with the whole idea of this dissonance between um, Jesus who often associated with people um, who were obviously considered immoral in his time um, and the church repels those people. Um, so there's definitely some cognitive dissonance there um, that this song, the song's really trying to express of like, we have we really formed ourselves into this good folks club, this little click of we, we're the good people, you're the bad people. Um, and that's, I don't think that's what the church is called to be. Um, we're, we're a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much all I have to share with y'all. Um, definitely, I'm just checking my list. Definitely, um, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for this. If you're an audio engineer and you're like, dude, you could have made things sound a lot better if you did this. Definitely let me know. Um, otherwise... Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to hope to put out some of these videos um, for some of the other music I'm making. And of course, I'm going to try and make some other music as well. Um, so appreciate your prayers and your support with all that. Um, yeah, uh, without further ado, God bless and I'll catch you next time.